Fiona at lunchtime there, telling her my little story. Oh, that's very kind, didn't you say? I was probably fishing for a compliment. It took you a while to say you weren't boring me. Thinking, oh, I know what he's after. I have to tell him he wasn't boring me. He said in public, okay. Yes. Yes, is that on camera? You weren't boring me. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. really looking forward to that cat nap, weren't you? Yes. Right, okay, lunch. Come on, let's get it back together again. Star jumps. Or not. Paul could run us through a sort of little regime. I, I, was, I was telling this story about how I test these things quite often in terms of what I try and get done in a period of time. One of which originally was the golf in a year and all of those things. And I've ended up doing this thing, which is a little bit mad, and I'm not suggesting, suggesting necessarily that you do it. But you know the way the Navy SEALs in the US, they have this thing, which the Navy SEALs is about the most tricky thing to be in the US, isn't that right? It's like SAS or whatever. And they are the guys that come in, but they to, to qualify for it, they go through, 12 weeks or something of training and then they do the thing called hell week at the end and hell week is just a horrific thing and they get to sleep about three hours a day or something and it did and, and, and what, what yeah it is basically and how what percentage of them fall about 75 percent or something well, so they do that as a product now in the states you can actually do that with navy seals they sell that Really? Oh, no, no, no. Of course it's it down a little bit. But that's right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh yes, I've seen that. I've seen You're that. You're perfect. Holiday the hell? I, I actually became a, I became obsessed. Please be quiet. We're all. <laughs> well, this is really intensive stuff. We're doing here. You can do that sort of noise at the health and safety thing further down. There. <laughs> we are cutting edge here. So I became obsessed with that in the hell week for a while just because I'm always fascinated with stuff like that. Um, and then I did a little version of it during my golf, which was very successful. I did it a couple of other times with another couple of business things. And then last week I decided to do another one to see whether I could write a book in a week. And it was a little bit crazy, but I managed to do it. But the thing about how you manage to do that stuff is you, you force yourself to get down to that 4%. You force yourself down to managing when you've no option but to do it. Um, you end up just refining really quite aggressively down into what actually makes the result. I'm actually very bad with my time. Um, so I had read about this thing called the Pomodoro Technique, where what you do is you set, you set, this is a Pomodoro. The guy that invented it basically had a kitchen, little tomato like that, that's where it comes from. And he was trying to work out what time could he really, really focus for. And he got his little kitchen tomato, and, and this is now, one of the ones that you buy as a result of the, you're getting one of these at the next <laughs> meeting. So you, t you take 25 minutes and you just work, you, you, ju you only work in 25 minute chunks and you work like a madman for 25 minutes on whatever it is you're working. And I can do 800 words in 25 minutes, I've now discovered. So um, this is the way I'm going to write. Do you words make sense? Well, the, the interesting thing, this, this, is, this is a book for a publisher, so I had it in advance, so <laughs> this wasn't me, so there was a, an element of nervousness <laughs> when it was put through, and... Um, when you say you, you thought you'd put yourself through hell, is that because you'd left it too late? I'd left it too late. You needed to get it done. I needed to get it done, right. but it was this, sort of this experiment. But, but, but it couldn't just be rubbish, you know, and I, in fairness, I had done quite a lot of research in, in the initial part of it. And it worked, so I did it in the week, but that's the, that, this is the technique that you, you, you can literally do huge amounts in 25 minutes. Now, there are, whatever, Peter Drucker talks about that you work in, the, the, the key to the executive, effective executive is that you work in, you know, unbroken two-hour chunks of time. Now, with the greatest of respect, I can't do that. I'm not an effective executive. I've tried 45 minutes, I've tried 90 minutes, and all of those things. By the time I get to about 25 minutes, I... I my intensive desire to be distracted has gone. But I can focus for 25 minutes. So I set up my little <laughs> Pomodoros on my chart on the wall. I draw little very badly drawn tomatoes. And I work out how many I've got to do to get that amount of words per day. And then by the end of the day, they're done. And apart from one day, I wrote, I had to go a wee bit more on one day and a bit less than another. So as a technique for really focusing on anything, and this is the glib thing back to joint ventures, if you were to spend 25 minutes per day purely looking for joint ventures, or as we were saying, focusing in on whatever of those engagement devices really, really work for you that you can get good at. Everybody can do 25 minutes, and if you can find one of the, oh, where are they? If you can find one of those, um, it would be better if I wrote a bit more clearly. <laughs> one of your 50, one of those things that you really want, I spent 
hours and hours and hours trying to get better and better and better webinars. But it's webinars that then manage to I managed to succeed in terms of having that perfect conversion device. You've got to keep going, but keep dropping away at your 25 hours once you've got the thing put together. How so long did you break for, John? Oh, uh, in theory, five minutes. I didn't. I broke for between five and 15. Minutes. Yeah, you know. But, yeah. but as long as I... But, but you're kind of... Because, I mean, I always thought I could write a thousand words an hour, which I could. But in that model, I can do 825 minutes. Now, it, I, I did a thousand and twenty-five minutes once, and then it depends sometimes... When you're going back and adjusting things, you, you, you can't quite do 800. But give or take, you're averaging in and around that. So it's just a little technique. That's really quite annoying. The weird thing is, of course, because it ticks. Yeah. It, it, you've got this sort of... What's that? Yeah, it is. It is exactly what it is. So, you know, when you think, wonder what's happening on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I type incidentally. You find yourself <laughs> like a nervous wreck. Yeah. Oh, completely. Completely. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They're completely and utterly mental. But it's a very good. I try to do two of them a year with something that I'm trying to get much, much better at. I'm not saying this is the. I'm not saying this is a useful thing if you've got good mental health. <laughs> Because I don't, but I like the little experiment as to what you can get done in the week and it work. You know, the kind of as we were talking about it in the fit, you can look, you can really make, you can change massive habits by going a bit crazy in the week. As I say, I first started it within a, a, a golf thing and got huge results in the week. And it comes back to Tony Robbins talks about people underestimate, overestimate what they can do in a week. I wrote about this in the first golf book. They overestimate what they can do in a week and underestimate what they can do in a year. And I talked about it in, in, in the golf book, and I said, look, heaven, heaven forbid I should criticise Tony Robbins. But I actually think people underestimate what they can do in a week and underestimate what they can do in a year, because most of us can go away from here, and as long as you don't have th three or four fine things to do, I dropped down the rest of my work to about 20% that week, and something very, kind of, something very, very difficult happened at home as well during that week as well. But I knew I had this thing set, and that was the day I could only write 3,000 words, because you have to just keep going. Now, there was another sort of sub deadline on there but if you give yourself that re sometimes if you can put enough pressure on yourself to give yourself the artificial deadline as well so that you don't let yourself down which is a horrible thing you know that sort of thing. you can do it anyway look as i say it's one thing i'm going to talk about a bit more in the in the mastermind uh this whatever it is next month because it's it, it's to do with just concentrated focus on that four percent thing anyway enough fatuous guff just quickly um our cameraman, Jason, is also very good at working with tight deadlines because we were talking about that over lunch and I realised I'd made a big boo-boo which is not to introduce him at the start of the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Jason will be uh, talking to us a little bit later about what he does. Because I'm sure right. he could, uh, he could be, pitching. be part of our... He could pitch... He can do a massive pitch fest at the end. It's not going to be talk, so... Uh, yeah. More to that. Yeah. <laughs> but back to you, John. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> My joint venture partner. Anyway, there, there they are. Now... How to contact them. Sorry, here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through the rest of the theory. I'm going to give you sample this, that, and the other, and ways to contact. There's quite a lot of specific detail that I'm going to go through. And then I want to try and go around the room and try and pick out a few people and see whether we can mastermind or brainstorm A, potential joint ventures, or B, what you might get out of those joint ventures. So how to contact them. The, 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 there are lots of different ways to contact people to get different types of result. Um, sometimes, I mean, I get contacted with a lot of golf ones by email, and they are rubbish. 97% of the time they're rubbish. I get contacted through my YouTube channel a lot too. Um, and, but, but ultimately, it depends a little bit on what you're most comfortable with. But email... A well-crafted email can work, and I'm going to give you the seven paragraphs that you need to have in within this, which also works as well for snail mail. Now, that's an expression that I really hate, and I don't know why I wrote it down. But the other one that I, that, I w that I meant to put underneath that was lumpy mail, and lumpy mail is where you send out physical stuff. So if you're looking for something, somebody as a big joint venture partner, what I would do is I would send out <coughs> my book, a whole, you know, um, a few other golf kind of things so that, you know, a few golf balls, whatever it is, something that is a, I'm sure you've done this within sending out press releases. If you can send out something that will catch their attention, you're much, much more likely to get them through there. Now, those big partners that you're after will be 
getting inundated with joint venture stuff all the time. So you want to try and do something to, if you have the, my physical proper book, you want me to send out the American one, which is in hardback. So you're trying to do this thing to show credibility more so than anything else. Um, now, one of the things that I do, the, the, the technique that I use is, I interact on social media. It's probably the only thing I do like that. I have some social media stuff going on that I don't do for the golf. So <laughs> there is a presence going on there. I would argue that it's not very effective. But what it does mean is I can then contact through, if somebody's very, very, um, if somebody's very active on social media, I can direct message them on Twitter or I can send them a PM or a DM or whatever on Facebook. And what I tend to say to them is, do you mind if I send you an email about something? So there will have been some interaction and I will try and get it through to them, this is who I am. Uh, this is what I do, and I, I always use the book and the film. I use the film because it's like, that film is, gives me huge platform. There's no doubt about it, for that market. But if you don't have a film being made, you have to try and find some sort of another way. And bear in mind, I was doing this way before there was ever even a book published. So you try and contact them and say, do you mind if I send you an email? So you've done this in this nice soft way where you haven't harangued them, and then you send, I mean, send them an email. John, so what does PM, DM mean? Uh, per personal, me private message or direct okay. message. So oh, okay. a, a direct message on Twitter or a okay. private message on okay. Facebook or something like that. So you have, ideally you start with some form of, I did it with a guy who has a YouTube list of 89,000, uh, 89, the biggest YouTube golf subscriber in the world. And I had some contact with him on, on Twitter uh, publicly, because I, I, I commented in a video that he'd done, I said it was really, Really good video, it's quite interesting in terms of what I was doing. Then I contacted him and, and he came back to me without he had some interaction there. So then I contacted him and, and I said, hi, you know, just I really enjoy what you do. It's a great product, and blah, 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 blah. Um, but I mean, the blah, blah, blah was all, hey, you're great, basically. You're a one-man PR machine, aren't you? Yeah. Got <laughs> <laughs> myself out of that joint venture there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, joint venture, I was going to do one of these on point. I, do, I did a lot of PR originally, so I kind of, you know, but... I don't really want to do it anymore. I was going to do a PR day, actually, but perhaps we could do that as a joint venture. So, um, <clears throat> so I then contacted him and said, on a private message, and said, look, we're doing this. We've got quite a big list. We're doing that. You've got that. Would it be OK if I sent you an email? And that's the way I do it, rather than just send an email. So he goes, absolutely no problem. Look forward to seeing it. Send the email on the phone with him for an hour and a half. And there's a joint venture happening later on this year. Okay, and it's nice soft stuff to begin with. And I always start, look, I don't know where this is going to go, but I think we could do this and this and this for you. And then he immediately comes back and goes, oh, I could do this and this. And you just keep going, I don't know where it'll go, but I really think a good product. I like your story. I know my people will be interested in your story, he said, which is what I want. And then gradually I've got it out there. Now, if I get that right, I won't be paying him anything. And that's, that, 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 there's a problem with that sometimes, because actually if he doesn't want to be doing overly commercial things, then he wants to speak through to my broader company which for the golf stuff, so he may come in under that umbrella. I won't have to do anything, but I get the revenue through from that if we create a product for him. So it gets a little bit messier that, but that's me with a very big back end, if you excuse that sniggery <laughs> gag again. And don't you worry, I've got a better example of that back end gag coming up soon. <laughs> Whenever you're all getting a bit sleepy, I think some of you have seen this gag before. So the telephone, I mean, I, I am not a big fan of telephone, to be honest, but uh, brave people still use the telephone. You know, there's no doubt about it that it's a very, very effective thing to do. And the fact that people don't have to use the telephone anymore makes the use of the telephone even more powerful. I'm kind of okay talking on it, but I don't really like talking to my mum on the phone, to be honest, which is probably not a great thing to admit on camera. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the thought of my mum watching these videos. <laughs> uh, but, you know, pick up the phone in person, do an Emma, be brave, walk up and say, hey, Frank, would you like to come to you know, to, to England, I say to Northern Ireland, I said, would you like to come to England and we can make ourselves a few hundred grand each? And he goes, yes. Now, most people wouldn't do that. Uh, but you've got to, you do have to do it. And then this networking strategy, this is something that I had worked on with Paula. We discussed this a few times. And it's kind of a networking strategy that is a very useful way to make use out of those networking events when you get in front of people and not just do that thing where you get a car and you never look at it again. So the, the, the principle is that you get in front of somebody who is of some interest to you. You ask them, you, you try and keep the conversation 70-30 to them. 
so it's about them. They're telling you their stuff. You drop in a couple of your little bits, hopefully the interesting bits, rather than just, you know, so that, they, that there's something that they're intrigued by, but you keep it very, very much about them. You try and rapport as much as you can with them so that they sort of think, yeah, you're an interesting person. You're not just going to sell me life insurance or any of those things. You, you know, I, 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 th that's interesting. You get their card, you immediately walk away, you write down on the back of the card as much detail as you possibly can, because you will forget. And then you go home, the next day you send them an email, and you just say, really nice to meet you, uh, interesting event. You come up with some details, some specific about what they said, and just say, it was really nice to meet you, who, you know, kind of, who knows where this may go in the future, but uh, nice to make a contact. So there's no sale, there's no nothing. And you see what reaction you get back from that. Then about three days later, you spend about, if it is from somebody you want to contact, you spend about a period of time, not very long, on Google, Googling stuff that relates through to what they were talking about so that you can find some piece of relatively short content, an article, a video, but you think about it, you really come up with something and you say, just I was passed this through by somebody else. So you're, you're credibility building in every part of what you're saying or I was talking to this person, I was doing that person, and they had showed me this, and I suddenly thought, this might well be of interest to you. Just ignore it if you've seen it before, that kind of thing. So it's a very soft, you're now my friend a little bit. Here's a thing for you. Here's a piece of content that relates through to what we were talking about or something. And then you wait and see, again, what comes back. It might be ignored, so they might have ignored you twice, or they might not. And then you give it one third go where you go into a little bit more detail and say, I was just thinking about that thing that we were talking. We are doing this. I don't know whether that would be of any interest to you. If they ignore you three times, you move on. But what you're trying to do, or, you know, I mean, it's, it probably isn't, you know, what an aggressive salesperson would do, but it works very well for me. And I think it's a very good strategy to use from a networking perspective that is so different from this arriving back with a bunch of cards in your pocket and then putting them, <laughs> you know, maybe into a little fold out thing or maybe just sitting there somewhere, you know. Um, so that, that, that is a process that you can put in place to try and go 4% as opposed to, you know, 96% or whatever, in terms of using networking properly and potentially getting in front of joint venture partners. So you're trying to provide some form of value in the build up before you start to then say, okay, here's what, you know, because your, your final kind of emails are about, here's what we're doing this or I'm doing this. I wonder, would this be of any interest to you or would it be of any interest to you if I did this or, I saw that you're doing this or something along those lines. So it's a process for that to work. Okay, proposal don'ts. We're gonna do do's afterwards. But when you're putting together proposals for people, you don't want to be too clever and smart alecky. I have in the past been too clever and smart alecky. And very often you kind of think your own humor is sort of gonna get away with it. I mean, I, I did it. When I was approached by the film company for the the first film company about the film, I came back with a smart aleck email to him, and then he didn't respond for about three days, and I can remember thinking, you dick. Because I was like, why did you think that was gonna be hilarious to go back to this person who's offering to make a film about you with a smart aleck answer? Now, eventually, he did come back because he'd been away, and I, you know, but I remember thinking afterwards, stop it. Don't try and be too clever or funny or amusing. Come back, you know. Mm. Nobody could, the new way email words on, on a written and whatever form, it's very clear, you know. Now, I got away with it, but it still makes me cringe to think that I can remember thinking, ah, oh, that was a funny thing to write. And it wasn't, you know. And, you know, and I nearly lost the whole thing. I mean, so don't be too clever or smart, Alec. Be sort of pretty clear in terms of what you're doing. Don't be arrogant. We do this and we're the largest and this and this. Be subtle in terms of your arrogance. You know, be subtle in terms of what it is that you're trying to say. So when I was, you know, getting a poll earlier on for not saying, you know, not, not mentioning enough of the premiership stuff or any of those other things. There's somewhere between not saying it and saying, oh, I did this and then I did that and I was a professional boxer and I knocked 17 people out or whatever it was. There's somewhere between that you have to find the line. And don't hype. You know, we did some work with a buffoon recently. Uh, we didn't do some work with him, with a guy. A, a hilarious story. <laughs> And he just went, came out with this endless, endless bullshit about how successful he was and 20,000 dollars per day was his consulting rate and he'd just come from here and he was doing stuff in Dubai and he'd been paid in New York to do this and we had dinner about six or seven of us and uh, it wasn't an expensive place to eat there was no huge bill but by the time the bill came 
the calculator had to come out because he said, I only had this and I wasn't drinking. So we were all sitting there going. And it was like, and, it, and, 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 and in that, around that table, there were multiple people who could have been of benefit to him. But I mean, this was like a student meal, you know, it was absolutely hysterical. So, but he was filled with hype. If you're going to hype yourself up, you do not follow, play that game through. afterwards. Follow through. <laughs> he could have thought, he could have said, I'll get the whole lot. Absolutely. And he would have been in a completely different mm. form. I guess we would have rumbled him eventually, but it was, it was just... <laughs> well, I don't know, I mean, but, but the reality is that overhype and not seeing it through, you know, nobody's doing anything with the game. Don't waffle. You know, don't, again, don't be too clever, but also don't get to the point relatively quickly in any form of a proposal. Now, bear in mind, what I'm generally talking about are proposals here via email or letter or something like that, but the same basic rules apply when you are face to face. Don't just stand there waffling on about something. Try and get to the point fairly quickly and lucidly. Don't expect them to know you or care. I touched on this earlier on. It's like my, my sort of golfing arrogance, this has caught me out a couple of times, because I will sort of say, I, I, I wrote, you know, I'm the guy that wrote Dream On, best-selling golf book in the UK for the last two or three years, and people go, I, I have no idea what that is. And it's like, and it doesn't matter that I can show them statistics. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, look, you know, it's like, well, you're a dick. <laughs> uh, so, so, so don't, you know, you've got to go in expecting that they don't know who you are, regardless of how much of a great thing you actually are. Yeah. Even though it's humiliating. Um, let's just wait for this to get mm. its act together. Well, hey! <laughs> All those heavy words that couldn't get up. Don't use things such as, funny, you said you were talking about opportunity there, I was thinking about that. Don't use these kind, overly hypey kind of words. Free, act now, cash. This could make you lots of cash. Careful of opportunity. I know you folk use opportunity but outside of that it's deemed to be an MLM network marketing thing yeah. so it may work for you but outside of that it can if you're if you're not doing that marketplace it can be deemed to be that I've got an amazing opportunity for you it's like well uh, let me be the judge of that you know um, hundred percent you know these kinds of hypey words guaranteed nothing's guaranteed please read profits easy millions don't go down that route don't, I thought that, no, that came up, I thought it's written smell badly. Don't spell badly, don't smell badly too, actually. Particularly for the one-on-one. -on -one. That is, uh, remember, that's most of the, one of those groups you had, Paula, had an issue with that, yeah? Mm. That is a joke, everybody. Don't spell badly and don't use bad grammar, like. Did you like that we joke? Oh, wise. Hmm? Wise. Wise? Time-wise. Like, weather-wise. Oh. Yes. I, I mean like a teenager saying like in the middle of every just sentence. So I was like... <laughs> and don't ever put four dots instead of three. I, don't I ever put four dots instead of three. Yeah. Yeah. Mightily sold off. I know. Have I ever had to tell you that after that? Samson, I haven't, have you? No, you'd have to tell me off. Yes, I thought. But I've had to tell everybody else off. <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> what is known in the industry as an ellipsis. Yeah. I can't remember who I learned it from. It's not four dots. It's not two. It's not seven. Use three dots. <laughs> and likewise, the exclamation mark works on its own. <laughs> okay? The whole point of it is that it's contained as one. <laughs> Did you notice how many of yours I had to remove? <laughs> yeah. I didn't, and I had to remove A, some of the ones on their own, because every sentence had them. And then I had to remove the three that you decided to really emphasize. It's like, whoa! <laughs> so, you know, th this is quite a useful thing. Because this is, uh, as a tool, it helps people to then think or care. And it also makes you think further on from that, but also leads you onto the next line. It's quite useful in terms of copywriting. You do a sentence with that at the end of a one line sentence, and then it drags them on down. It makes you think like that. That's a copywriting tool. Tick. But don't, don't uh, exclamation mark them. Don't overlay. You know, make sure that it, it's coherent. So you've got to read through. I'll come to this in a second. But I read through it time and time and time again to make sure that it's right from their perspective. Proposal do's. Do use their name. In the email header, if you wish, Tim, come on now. Can't stop yawning. Yeah, I can't. You're so boring. <laughs> you have to be more enthusiastic after lunchtime up here. Because you can see everybody's like... <laughs> Don't, do use their name and in the header if you wish, but don't make it look like it's from an autoresponder. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you, so I would try and do sort of, hey, Frank, um, uh, personal contact through via Paula MacArthur so that they understand what it is, that there's a bit more detail in there rather than, hey, Frank, be I've got a free, amazing opportunity for you, which looks as if it could have been stuck through from a list somewhere. Uh, do make it personal. And I mean, age and sex, etc. be aware that if you're talking to a 26-year-old female versus a 76-year-old man, you talk in a slightly different way. Don't use street language and try and be cool, but just be slightly aware of the way that you of the way that you talk with, with, with the different folk that you're talking to. Because it's really important that this gets read properly. This is my whole perspective of books. There's no point in putting a book out there if it doesn't get read. So people, that, uh, you know, those folk who have been to one of my seminars before know that this is one of my big things. There's a lot of people sticking books out there, thinking it's great, here's my shiny book, but if it doesn't get read, it's pointless. So it must be read. So this proposal, you know, because you, because you want an outcome from it. It can't just be an, an ego trip. This proposed must get read. And, and keep reading it through like this. You can refer to mutual friends. That sort of is, oh yes, Big Dave told me to call you. Or whatever it is. Something that they know. <laughs> something that they know. That, that, that you might know. Someone that they know. Respect them and demonstrate detailed knowledge. In other words, I like your part. I've, I've done this before in the golf one. I think this is an exceptional product that you've got. I really like how you've done that. I liked how you did that video on this. I really thought that was very good. That you, so it's like, all right, he knows me. Now, everybody's ego is strong enough to know that if somebody says, I really like that and it's good that you've done it, it's almost impossible not to think, oh, really? <laughs> it, so, so, so if you do know anything about them, put it in there. If you don't know anything about them, do some Googling and find out a thing. That's what I do. You just find out one thing. That article that you wrote about this I thought was exceptional and I tell people in my group about it. That's sort of guff. <laughs> it's quite a useful thing to say because everybody thinks, oh, yes, I am quite clever. You're trying to just appeal to that base stuff. Uh, indicate flexibility with the obvious pisking exception, i.e. the bottom feeders. So you can be flexible with the people that are your highest first folk. Do not be flexible with the bottom feeders. Spend your time in that 4% rule focusing on the people that will get the results for you. So when we, when Paul does his launch, first of all with me, we tweak the figures and he goes out there and try and find, maybe finds a 100,000 people list. He is not going to go, this is the way it is, take it or leave it. He's going to go, now this worked for us, this is the way we did this. Is there anything you would like me to change there? Would you like me to speak directly through to your people? Would you like me to do a webinar for you? Would you like me to do an interview? You've got to get flexibility for those big ones because they're going to pay your mortgage forevermore if you get that right. And be crystal clear. Be crystal clear about what your offer is. Be crystal clear about what you want. And, and bear in mind that want could just be, can you give me 20 minutes on the phone? But be crystal clear about what you want them to do. Be crystal clear about your product be crystal clear about what you're currently doing. Don't leave them getting to the end, having read it and thinking, what, you know? And don't jump too fast, but again, work from person to person. I'm gonna give you, bear in mind, this, this seven paragraph version of how to do this. So th these are general do's and don'ts, okay? I like this one. Uh, and I got this from somebody else. Uh, I was doing some work with, in, in this kind of expert industry. So, you know, I used to have, nearly three million pounds worth of debt. And that wasn't just personal debt, that was business debt, you know, bank debt. And when you run a proper business, 120 staff, and we were turning over a lot more than three million, but you know, when, when, when you go to a bank and try and borrow that amount of money and run a business of that type, as, as you would know, um, you, have to, you have to be planning out properly. You have to be viewing it in terms of, you've got to go to the bank and say, this is what we're doing this quarter, this quarter, this quarter, this is when we expect this to happen. That's the way you run proper businesses. When you get away from that, there's a slight tendency to remove that out of your kind of thinking. So what you want to try and do is make sure that you are presenting yourself in as professional a way as possible. So I was doing some work with somebody and they said to me, said, let's definitely do something together. Uh, let's, let's pencil it in for late first quarter of next year. And I thought, oh, that's really quite cool. Because nobody talks like that in this industry. Everybody goes, let's, <laughs> let's do it now. Whereas you think, oh, I've got they, these are my, these are the, what I'm doing. So I was talking to who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody about their business, and um, they were so they were talking about uh, how they manage 
a joint venture person. That's right, I know who it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're trying to, to how they manage a joint venture person uh, who wanted to do a joint venture with them. And I said, well, th this is what you have to do. Within my program, I do this amount of joint, per joint ventures for this type of person per year. I do this amount of joint ventures for people who do, I do two joint ventures with people who have a similar product to me per year. And both of those are booked up, so I'm not free until the second quarter of next year. So suddenly it's, you, you, you're going back to a business system to say no. And also then that person had to then say, but you've copied all my stuff. So <laughs> I'm never doing one with you ever. But, but the point was, if you can talk in terms of quarters, it makes it look as if you are a player, you have a plan, this is the way you work. My business is doing this this quarter, or completely booked up, but I can do something for you next quarter. I'm starting all of my promotions for a big joint venture, lots of people on board for the golf right now, and I'm late for a May launch, okay? That's what those people need. People need months of advanced stuff. Now, if an amazing opportunity comes, that doesn't mean you can't do something for next week, but try and think months in advance. This is what we're doing on this date. And of course, actually do it on that date. Keep your selling short. So this is within the proposal. Make sure you're not pitching. It's not just a big aisle pitch. Because you're, what you're generally trying to do is to get a a, a phone call, a meeting, you know, uh, just a request for, okay, yeah, send me some more information. And then how can I help you? Keep coming back to that. It's got to be this, this is your thing in the whole, in the back of your mind. How can I help you? Constantly thinking, how does this proposal sign from their perspective? If it was sent to me, would I buy into it? Okay, so this is the seven paragraphs, give or take. I say, don't worry, you'll get all of this. Initial paragraph, who you are and why you specifically chose them. I'm John Richardson. I am the author of Dream On, blah, 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 blah. We also sell a product called blah, 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 blah. I have, I have admired your work from a distance. Don't say that. I have enjoyed, you know, I, I really enjoyed, the, I saw you did this thing and I thought it was really exceptional. That's your opening paragraph. Paragraph two, why you are writing to them. I am writing to you because we are doing this kind of thing, blah, 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 over the next few months. And I think your subscribers will be very interested in my story, which is then being made into a film because of this. And we've got Sam Torrance involved now. So th this is an outline. You can tweak around with this a little bit, but it gives you a structure to then think, how does this work? Paragraph three, product name. I am launching the Dream On Golf, blah, 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 blah. We have sold this within our other markets, and this is that we've sold X hundred thousand dollars worth of it. The conversion rates are to cold traffic list, to a cold list, we, what is it? we convert 3%, three, between three to 5% of cold traffic. We convert 5% uh, of paid traffic. Total sales are this. Average affiliate commissions are $372, okay? As a, the, most of that's hard facts. Not just, it'll be really great for everybody. Hey, we'll make a fortune. Paragraph four, proof, screen grabs and testimonials. So my golf one has a screen grab of that 300 and whatever it is, which is taken through from ClickBank, so I can't fiddle around with that. And a testimonial from my biggest affiliate, the legendary Andy Brown, who you saw earlier on. And he says, I have made several hundred thousand dollars with John Richardson. He's a lovely fella. He does far more than you'd ever expect, and he's great to work with. That's the gist of it. Paragraph five, industry endorsements. Broader perspective. Sam Torrance said this, so famous people and other cool stuff. What's going on? What's happening in the film? We've got Callaway on board. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got, we might have a <laughs> golf company on board. We have all of this other stuff going on. So that they go, oh, this is a player. Now, you know, you don't get players. Some of you will have varying levels of player stuff there. So get the very best player stuff that you can. In the initial stages, all I had was I wrote an article for Golf Digest. Golf Digest is the biggest magazine in the world. But that, that was all I had to begin with. But that was big enough. I was, <laughs> I was in Northern Irish TV. You know, but I didn't say I was in Northern Irish TV. I said I was in BBC. I was featured in the BBC. You know. BBC One Northern Ireland <laughs> for the news. <laughs> Little fella out in Bangor has done a thing. <laughs> Paragraph five. Yeah, you know, and seeing as we've stopped bombing and shooting each other, there is not a lot going on there. So a little fella out in Bangor, County Down, can get on the news for a crappy little golf thing. Paragraph six. Short but very specific details 
of what you are doing and the help you would like. I had did my launch with John Richardson. We got this kind of result. These are the figures. I am doing a big launch through at this time and I would love you to be involved. You know, and I, would it be possible to have a chat with you about this and see whether we could do a mailing through to your list or some form of joint venture promotion which might you feel might serve your people well. That kind of language. Paragraph seven. The help that you will provide and the next steps. That means we, I have got this person here to do that. We have got all of these things. We have this system set up. So then you keep reading it over and over again until it is correct, but from their perspective. You keep thinking, okay, if I'm reading that, would I, am I prepared to let that fella call me? Am I prepared to let that fella, whatever. Am I prepared to block out 20 minutes to talk to him? Or fella or female. And this is the stuff that they may come back with that you need to be aware of. <coughs> Specifics of profit split and better deals. So let's say Paul goes out, as I said before, to the industry captain Big Bollocks, who has 200,000 people on his list. They might go, whoa, big fella. You may have been a very great boxer, but I've got a big list. I need 100%, or I need one of those things. Or now it's complicated because we're talking about a, a product, a recurring income product for Paul, which is a back-end product as well. But if you were selling a one-off product, to begin, let's say Paul had a, a one-off product of, that he was selling for, 30, say, $37. When he gets all of the names and these customers to carry on with, he should have some. I mean, you always give 100% for those. The, the, the industry standard will be 75%. But for something like that, you would go, look, I'm prepared to give you all of the money because I, I just would like to work with you and see that I can prove it. And then he's got all of these buyers. Hopefully, it doesn't take, they don't take him any time. And then hopefully then he would then be hitting them with a recurring membership then afterwards or a higher priced product. But he's got buyers and people on the list who may buy in the future. So in those situations, in many cases, you don't get away with just even 75%. There's the, the kind of the industry leader in, in Paul's market on, 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 on ClickBank will be giving for his biggest affiliates, he gives 90%. You can only do 75% in ClickBank. ClickBank is a, a kind of an affiliate based system which helps people get paid. Um, and, and allows affiliates to promote what you've got and get automatically paid. The maximum you can give is 75%. He provides an extra up to 15% for people who are doing big volumes through, and more on occasion. So they may come back with that and want more. They might not, though. They, they very often might not. If you've got your story and all of that stuff right, you know, you end up in that, uh, you know, where, um, uh, you know, Frank Kern just goes, you know, I'd quite like to do this if we could do that. And then he is coming back with something else. He's going, you know, Rolls Royce and Downton. Not everybody's going to ask you for that stuff, but be prepared to do it. Mm -hmm. So how much would you offer in your, you see, you might have, they might come back and push for 100%. How much would you typically offer in your paragraph uh, 6, which is short, very specific details um, of what you're doing and how you'd like to help? Would you outline anything there? Depends enormously on the... Generally, you want to be talking that stuff through with them. But if I was doing it with, it with somebody who I knew already, for example, Cafe Culture, I have said to them in the past, you can have all the money when I need you to do the mailing for me because they know I want to harvest the list. Okay. I will come and speak and do an event for you for two hours. You can charge whatever you want and you can have all the money. And it becomes like, mm, that's <coughs> easy enough to say yes to. But then I know them. And there's a relationship already there. Generally, what you want to try and say is, it depends on the product, but it's hard to get away with less than 50% for a digital product. Mm. Would, you leave the, would you leave the detail of that out of yes, the original? Yes, you would. Yes and no. I, if it's in an industry like, the, you know, yeah, I would generally, within the golf thing, I would say these are the average amounts thing because we're paying 51%, whereas a lot of those one-off payments are paying 75 So I automatically look smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, or like I said, they're going to get less money, so I'm focusing on the money as opposed to the percentage. So weigh up the different ways, do you know what I mean, that it's perceived within the industry. They will always prefer money to percentage. Mm. That old classic thing, you can't bank a percent. Mm. No? Uh, but play it a little bit. If, if you can say to them, we, we're making on average this for our affiliates, that's what they care about. Okay. Now, if you're starting out, so Paul's going to have not have long-term figures there for his industry, sorry, for his product. Um, off the back of his launch with me because it wouldn't have been going long enough. So he's going to have to go, this is what we're paying and this is the way that it's working. These are the conversion rates. <coughs> Understand? 
I just want, yeah. I mean, in terms of that original email that he would send, if he didn't know you and he was approaching, yeah. would he mention anything about that in that original email? Or would he wait for you to come back to something or wait for a conversation to start to then give the specifics of numbers? It depends a little bit on his, on this, on my understanding of who he is. If I know who he is, or he manages to persuade me very strongly in his email that he's, that he's a big fish, or a bottom feeder, mm -hmm. then I will be much more receptive to then him not giving me the details. If I don't really know who he is, and that isn't very big, but they, then I'm going to have to do more in terms of the figures. And in many cases, from that fresh start, you're, you're going to struggle at 50%. But that's what you've got to emphasize. It's recurring. This is what you get. This is the way that it's working. A testimonial from me. Paul's a grand fella. He's done this, and it's worked extremely well. I've seen this. He adjusted this. You have to, do you know what I mean? You have to balance one with the other. Now, if you, if, if you just have the figures, you've got to go out there pretty aggressively with just the figures, to be honest. We will pay this percentage of everything you send through. I will write all of the sales letters for you. But most of the time, you want to be doing that on the phone. Or, or, or in a longer conversation once they tentatively put their hand up and said, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. So they may come back and say, because they will understand what you're doing, they will come back and say, well, you know, what, what's the back end here? What else are you selling? You know, well, what, you know, so let's say Paul was, Paul, it's interesting, Paul has a 250 pound product that he sells through his website. Now, under an ideal structure, that would be through the whole setup. And I would get a cut out of that, or an affiliate would get a cut out of that, out of that too. It's, it, it, it's quite nicely crafted that it's not there. But some of those bigger ones might go, I see you're selling them this. I need some of that. Big fella. Or do you know what I mean? They, they, those big ones will ask you those questions. What's what, you know, what else am I going to get out of this? What else are you selling to them? What else can I then expect that I might make out of that other stuff that you're selling to them. So it's a very low ticket price item to begin with, and you give them 100% there. The ones that know what they're doing will go, right, okay, yeah, well, I understand you, 100% of $13. <laughs> but you're, I know you're trying to sell a seminar at $2,000 at the far end, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So each, each example has to be taken to an extent within understanding the marketplace, Underst you understanding them as the marketplace. Who, what, what, what is it they understand? And the big ones will know this. They will, know, they will, they will want other stuff. So in the, the sort of thing that you're doing, it's online sales, there's kind of, it can be monitored by a kickback. Yes. Of it's going to be in our, if I look at the cleaning business, for example, mm -hmm. we would effectively be harvesting the list. It might initially be just for a, some high value offer that we've got for their, for their list that they might yeah. download that they become yes. part of our list. It's difficult then to track that through, though, in terms of that person, a meeting being set up yep. um, down the line, and a contract being won. So any tips in terms of how to give them some assurance that you know, something that comes off this list, we might, that, you know, if we win the contract down the line, we will. Sorry, I'm just this. Affiliate tracking software and auto checking. In many cases, they will say, you might go, we did, we did one where we went, here's this product promoted first. You won't make a lot of money here, but if they buy this next product, you will make a thousand pounds. And that can be done even in an industry like It can like be done in infusions of. Okay, and, and in an industry like ours where it might be six months later, yeah. we go and see mm -hmm. them and put them up on yeah. and mm -hmm. Some people are only interested in the back end. Mm -hmm. okay. the, so your front end, you explain to them this is the front end, <coughs> this is what we're doing, if you can promote this inexpensive seminar, your people will be tracked through via my Infusionsoft. You can send your auditor in to check this. So the reason why ClickBank works really very, very well, very, very well, is that people know they get paid. This is a really big deal for people. I once took 18 months to get paid. Nothing will destroy your reputation quicker than not paying for sales. It, 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 and it's infuriating. So they will want to know, they will all have had their fingers burnt. If it's ClickBank, they know I will get paid by ClickBank. I don't get the money. Sorry. I do a deal with you. I'm promoting out from your list. They know that I will not receive your money. It goes straight to you. Okay. Now, so therefore, you've got to then do a credibility thing and saying this is the way we structure this. It's run through Infusionsoft. They're tagged with this. You can see. Do you know what you, you have to reassure them. 
Further details of resources, designers, subdomains. So you might go and say, look, this is what we can do. I can create a subdomain for you. I can buy a subdomain for you, or a domain for you. So let's say I was doing breakpowerblueprint.com, which is my main golf domain. I would then say to a very big affiliate, we could do uh, break par, the breakpowerblueprint.com you can have. So that you, they, they don't see in any way that you're doing an affiliate deal, that, that, that your customers can see you're doing this and they take it through and that becomes their link. Some people will want some flexibility like that and you need to be able to say, well, yes, I can't do that myself, but I have got somebody who can do that. I can, they can create a specific, we can change the landing pages so that it's within your colors so that the, the, um, you know, it can be designed in a specific way to work for you. The big ones will want a little, may want a little bit of flexibility. They might not, but they may do. So some people are much more concerned about design than others. I'm less concerned about it. But then I've also tested it within the golf industry that sort of a more amateurish form of design actually sells better. That may not be the case now, but when we tested it about five years ago, that's the case. People want to see that sort of down home, you know, you know, hey, I'm just like you kind of thing. It works. And you know, that's that's another whole seminar to be honest. But but you know. Be aware of what works, but also be receptive to what they want. They will very often want to know who else you're working with. And if you're working with somebody that annoys them or has let them down in the past, it's quite tricky. So we, within one of the groups that we were involved with, had somebody who was going to come into the group, wouldn't come in because he thought somebody else was coming in. So. <coughs> From a reputational perspective, we didn't understand what that was, but we trusted that person more than the person who was coming in, and it turned out to be right. So th a good one will want to know lots of these things, and you need to be prepared for that. Uh, payment dates. When will I get paid? Okay. Big deal. That's why they're doing it. Uh, generally, that's why they're doing it. I say with other provisors, there are all sorts of other uh, 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 ways to do this. And refunds and chargebacks. So somebody buys the product. So you do a JV with me. You send your people to my list. Uh, they refund because they don't like the product, or they charge back, which is even which is a really unpleasant thing from you know that goes through the, your, your merchant account. And, and ClickBank hate chargebacks. Everybody hates chargebacks. It really doesn't help anybody. Who pays for that? You know? Do you? Are you going to have to foot the bill for a refund, or am I? Now, the great thing about ClickBank is it does it all for you, but it is an ongoing issue. Most affiliate software will track it back to your account, but if I paid you through a, an Infusionsoft thing or one shopping cart or, or one of those other things that are out there, you know, and I have to then go back and try and get the money from you, that's really kind of messy. So you need clarity in that. They, they need to know these facts. This is the, the, these are the nitty-gritty details. You know, if you are doing a deal with somebody and, and there's half a percent, when do you pay them? Do you pay them when the money is banked? You don't know if there's no refund policy, obviously, or a refund policy, but somewhere within that, you need lots of clarity there once you're past that initial, hey, here we are, and this is what we're doing here, perspective. I mean, what way are you running that, your product? You do, your online okay. product, sorry, you, yes. Um, well, like on that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm. and what's your refund policy or whatever? I haven't quite got there, have we? No. It's also, there's a slight delay on the, on the entire fees when the people yeah. are engaged in money. It, it's just every aspect of any joint venture that you're all doing will have, as I say, you know, I'm trying to pick out as many different versions of it as possible in my mind. So we'll go into a bit more of this in, in a minute or two when we do one-on-ones. Um, every single aspect of this is, is different. So, Try and position this in terms of how your stuff works. But good, good joint venture partners will come back with versions of these questions, is the point. Okay, quickly as we can, walk away from excessive greed. I want this, 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 and this. There, there has to be a point where we eventually go, okay. <laughs> walk away from excessive arrogance. It's the excessive arrogance, I got $20,000 a day, we're gonna work this bill out because I only have 13 pounds worth of starter. <laughs> walk away from that gut feeling in terms of who you can work with. Gut feeling is an odd one, because actually gut feeling, if we get it right, makes us work with people that we like, and that isn't always the best thing to do. But if there's that gut feeling of think, mm, I, something about you doesn't click, women are better at this than men, bizarrely. 
Well, they also, they're better. We're better at everything else. But they are, well, women are better at that thing in terms of grasping. It's like, mmm, there's something fishy. Whereas we can be like little puppies. Yay, it'll be great. So you've got to try and listen to that and things like that. Walk away from bullshit and walk away from selective email responses or not. This drives me up the wall. When I, I do a big crafted email and there are seven points and here are what, here's what we're going to do. And they come back and they answer four. It's, it, that to me, it, it, it's, it's like a deal breaker to me. You know, you know I, I, we, do those three not matter? Do you not care about those? Do you not read them? Every aspect of the answer to that is, yeah, I'm not really the type of person you want to work with. So if people come back with that stuff, just go, you know, really start to think no. Or if they don't reply at all, I mean, like Tamsin had to get across me earlier on for not replying to stuff because I'm rubbish at that. But then we're not currently doing a JV. But if you're actually working oh, with somebody, no. I know, I you're just a friend. <laughs> I know, I know. No, no, it, no, it, it, no, no but it, it's quite, it is really important. I'm rubbish at emails, actually. I'm rubbish at most content. But, uh, but, but it really is annoying. But it's a selective one. I am only saying that because <laughs> that's the one that really annoys me. But if there are certain things that people do that you can't work with, walk away because you just get frustrated. Say yes to people who you can work with within reason. And that's the same reason I'm saying earlier on. It's like, not just work with because we'll have fun. It needs to be, you know, what are our joint arrangements here? People who do more, if people actually do that more stuff, you think, well, I didn't ask you to do that. You've done that. You've got to, th those people are gold dust when you're trying to do joint ventures with them. Professionalism. Now, Paul is not very professional. So that's the one that I managed to avoid from this perspective. So you don't have to have all five of these. <laughs> Say yes to clarity. If people keep coming back, okay, here's what we're doing on this date. This is how it's going to work as best as you can. I don't mean professionalism, you know. I just mean in terms of yeah, replying to the stuff on time. It doesn't have to be, hey, we wear a suit and tie. Realistic expectations. So if people go, oh, we're going to make a fortune, it'll be amazing. And they think, well, no, I know how this works. And if we make 3% here and 2% there and half a percent there, we will have done well. You know, you've got a list of this. You've got to be realistic. If they're coming up with too much nonsense like that, they haven't done proper work of this type before. The two words, I promised I went through this, the sales, um, I put this in last night because I went through the sales and I realized that I promised uh, two words. Mm -hmm. if, if I, I, by, by complete disclosure, I wrote, when I wrote that guff for this, I said there are two words that you must absolutely know that govern all joint ventures. I couldn't remember what they were last night. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it was built up so much that I said, if you get these, everything's fine. I'm thinking, I'd like to know them. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat there and I thought, what might they be? <laughs> now, if I remember properly, I will put them up because these aren't quite good enough, okay? So as quickly as possible, let's skirt over this. I'd like to apologize for my distinct lack of professionalism and clarity. Oh, yeah? Clarity of outcome. I think they're okay. I think if you can have clarity of outcome in any joint venture, if you can have complete clarity as to how it's work and a really crystal clear view of what your outcome is, and that could be multiple outcomes, as I said, then I think those are two good words. But they're not the real ones. <laughs> when did we get the real ones? Uh, oh, if, I, if I ever remember. Honestly, win win. Win win. I know I should have just done that. Well, win win. Yes. Win uh, win win. Brackets. Three words, win. Well, who's the third person? The, the joint venture broker? No, the, the, the end user. All right, you've got to get two wins for yourself. That doesn't sound no, very win-win for me. One for you, one for the... Oh, yes, the one, the end user. And, and the end user. You're a customer. Okay, mm. I might the use that. Words. <laughs> <laughs> you have to down for the two words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason we're here. <laughs> he, he had to supply them. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 this is what I said, you want this. This isn't a joint venture today. This is just teaching about it. <laughs> Two words. They'll do. They'll do. Don't, don't ever work with people who say nice that'll lunch. do. Yeah. <laughs> nice lunch. Yeah. Okay. Now the agreement letter. We're getting close to the, the detail of this, and then we're going to get on to the one to it. What are our timings, Paula? We're finishing at four thirty. Okay. The agreement letter. Okay. Is everybody's RNG okay? You're doing okay there, Tim. A couple of tough moments there, but. You've <laughs> But now, now that you've got your win-win-win, you've got a little bit of swagger back, so you'll be okay. <laughs> the agreement letter. I, I like to think of this just in three things. You go through, so, so you've decided that you're going to do it. If I was doing this with, as a person who's very good at joint ventures, I would say to Paul, this is exactly how this is going to work. We're not currently doing this because I do a lot of stuff on Handshake. And also if you do stuff through ClickBank and so on, there's, there's an element that, you know, 
and because I'm working with them in some of this stuff, you, you don't have to worry too much about this, but it's very good to come back and say, so I'm doing a big joint venture next month in America, and I will do this. This is exactly what I'm going to be doing for their customers on this date and in this fashion. This is exactly what they're going to be doing. Now you don't have, you just kind of go, and I've done this, I did, I did the first version of this with another mutual friend of ours, and I said, okay, let's just make sure, because we're friends, let's make sure we've got this covered. I'm going to do this, 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 and this. You're going to do this, 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 and this. And this is the mechanism that we are using to get this to work. Now read through this, because this is really important. This will be our, this is exactly what I said, this will be our agreement should we end up in that horrible situation where we fall out. So I'm doing this, you're doing this, and this is how we are splitting the money. And we had a third party in that, a joint venture broker as it was, who coincidentally was Paula. Because they, so, and ClickBank's really quite cool in that you can put that in as a joint venture broker and get somebody paid like that. But there are all sorts, most systems can be of, of that type. So that you say, this person brought us together. Some version of that. Now, if it's a big one, you do go legal, obviously. But in general, I try and keep it like that. that. A lot of that is really quite legally binding, to be honest. If somebody comes back and says, yes, I completely agree with that. That's how it's working. That, that's pretty, pretty tight legally, you know, without having to go to a lawyer. So, so that is the way that I structure that. Oh, it's also that. And detail, this is a crucial one, actually. I, I, again, I'm afraid I, I only did that bit. That line only came on last night because I'm thinking about that a bit something else. Details of who owns the joint product. So let's say, I'm doing quite a lot of this joint product at the moment. So let's say I do something with Amanda and we create a joint product and we do a two hour thing. We, I have to then put into that there. This is how this is working. You're gonna do this, we're gonna speak in this day. You're going to say this, you're gonna give away this amount. Are we going to sell something off the back of that or is it pure content? There will be a product there, either in terms of the initial thing or in terms of what happens afterwards. How much, who owns that? If you sell it, do I get a stick cut out of that? Or if you sell it, do you keep all of that? And do I sell it? If I sell it, do I keep all of mine? Um, if you are you, what happens if you just decide to give it away all the time as a freebie? Mm -hmm. Then that cuts all of my sales. Now, there are there are no there are no rights and wrongs in any of those, but you have to have that clear because if you do something and expect that this will provide you with some revenue in the future, and then suddenly it's been given away, you're going to be mighty miffed. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have the clarity of that to begin with. Oh yeah, I was thinking, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> this is the bit now where I want to try and have a little chat with people about two things. People, you are my people. You and your outcomes and you and who and where. So, if I may pick upon Paul, what do we want to do about breaks and things? I just think we, let, let's just do literally a five minute break now if anybody's yeah. 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 Does somebody have a thing from there? Or you just move back? Oh, oh yes. Oh. Hello. Paul is cosied up because he's a lovely cosy fellow. John, you know everything that you were teaching. Is this on? The everything you were teaching just now. If um, you know, let's say I yes. want to go ahead and do something, or anybody in the room, yes. do you do a done for you service? Uh, is that, is no. that what it's called? You Not know? really. Not. Not really. Oh. Couldn't you? Uh, to an extent, yes. You know, when, let's say I can't be bothered to write that letter and this and yeah. that, and oh, the whole thing, you go, John, here's your million pounds, go do it. It, it, it. It's an interesting <laughs> thing because um, a lot of that comes back to how I want to structure the business. So the answer is yes, but I have all of these things that I do and I don't do. And uh, one of them is don't employ people. I have this stupid thing for a coffee shop, so I say, I don't wear a tie and I never will. And I also say, uh, these are rules about working. It's really quite an interesting way to get people to buy in or not buy into you. In the coffee shop one, I say, if you are talking to anybody else in any form about advice, do not contact me. That's a slightly arrogant thing to say. And I say, and I also have my website saying, I'm completely booked this year. Mm. So like, you can't get me in this year. So and then, then what happens is people, <laughs> they read the books, they, they engage and ask, I really need this guy, it's so hard to get a hold of. Yeah. So I had this guy, I'm doing a little tiny bit of work with a guy in Brighton at the moment, who has a, he's opening a coffee shop. And he went to his life coach, and his, or his business coach or something, and they mapped out the letter to send to me in an effort to get me to work for him. I never thought it would go as far as this. Yeah. And they tried it over and over and over again, and then threw it away each time. And then one night at about half past 10, after a couple of drinks, he just wrote it as quickly as he could and sent it through to me. But it was really well done, and I said, yeah, okay. 
And he was like, oh, I just knew I had to get you. <laughs> and I had no idea that that worked quite as well as that. Now, that makes it sound as if I'm trying to do it, but it's a really good way to get people. Now, I don't really want those clients, is, is the point of it, but I need to do two a year. But if I get two a year, I need to get two a year, as I say, not to get too theoretical. If I get two a year, I want them to be gagging for it, not to use too much of an unpleasant teenage term. <laughs> now, I, uh, every day, so excuse me, it's 43-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> it, so the anymore. answer to that, uh, that makes it sound as if I'm trying to put off doing that. Yes, I could do it, but it falls outside of what it is I necessarily want to do. I keep, I've hummed and hard over various bits and pieces of this in terms of then employing people to do that stuff. But still, I'm sort of saying no. But I will probably put it within a package of more detail of that, which will be a, a big part of that membership site that I'm doing, so that you have a bit more step by step. So yes and no is the answer. Mm -hmm. But no, I don't want to sit down and write. I mean, I, I work with Paul, but Paul's in my mastermind group. So you know, he's paying me quite a chunk of money anyway. So there's an element of, OK. So I went on and I rewrote the, some of his pages here and there. But that's kind of part of the deal. Mm -hmm. So if I wouldn't want to do it as a one-off, but if people were there on a coaching or a mastermind basis, then the answer is yes. You know, yeah, but then I've got to get all of the money from Paula <laughs> and you and all of that other stuff, and I don't care about the spas. Click back. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yes, uh, yeah, sort of an odd answer, but yes. But we can okay. maybe talk further about that because you're my new JV partner from the room. Once we've thrashed out the deals, and you have got too upset with me not knowing the two words. <laughs> so we'll get that through, and then we do these feedback forms. I was very disappointed not to get the two words. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do these. Well, uh, Tim's two words. Yeah, <laughs> Tim's, <laughs> Tim, <laughs> Tim, Tim, once he words. finally woke up, Tim's two words were acceptable. <laughs> 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 Tim with the extra one, there's three. Yeah, so just, uh, I, I did the, uh, very, very briefly, one story before we get launched into this. I did, used to do these on webinars, and we'd much bigger room. Well, no, 20 odd people in the rooms. And uh, I did it on a webinar. Were you there at that one, the first one? I did. And I, I used to do this stupid thing, which is my amusing trouser oh, guy. I didn't really regret this. So I would stand there when people were working and stuff, and I would do this amusing trouser guy. Where, oh, my dad taught me this when we were young. He would just stand there and he'd just go. So you try, <laughs> trousers move in a peculiar way. And I did it too many times during the day. And we got feedback in the forum saying, I don't find the amusing trouser guy <laughs> very amusing. <laughs> I find it crude and rude. <laughs> so I don't do it anymore, <laughs> even though I've just done it. You were there for that, yes. I was there as well. It was brilliant. Yeah, I know. Uh, right, Paul. <laughs> you kind of know Paul's business. You know how we're working. What we're saying is, and, and Paul's an easy one to sort of mastermind within this because, so Paul, Paul's business, fitness instructor, professional sportsman, two different arenas in the past, wanted to move away from high street business in London, obviously massive rent rates, and, and leases and the pain of that kind of business. Wanted to create more of an internet lifestyle, spend more time with the kids because he was doing, you know, um, two shifts basically a day and not really seeing the kids at all, isn't that right? Enjoyed the business, but wanted to get a different kind of a, a much more flexible business, which is then selling his expertise. Predominantly online at the moment, but will want to do some one-on-one -on -one stuff. Charges big bucks from a one-on-one -on -one perspective ideally through to city boys, that kind of thing. Ta your people, time starved, cash rich. Hooray, hooray for them. Uh, how can we all make money out of them? <laughs> Let's get them in the room. <laughs> Line up. Um, uh, so, so that's it at the top end. The rest of it is a basically a just under 20 pounds per month out of the individual person's pocket membership site. He wants them to stay in as long as they possibly can. He wants them to forget about the amount of money, but of course he will provide great value. So it's back to what we were saying. So, but is that figure inclusive or X of that? That is X, X. of that, so it tips over. Sorry, what's the number? Uh, 1997 plus plan. It's very good. I'll give you the URL. But the point, the, 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 the point <laughs> is, yeah, that, that's what you want to say. And you get a massive amount up front. So it's into a meticulously crafted offer because boy, have we thrashed this about. And it's into no brainer offer category. But that's because I've done so many different Can forms I, of. I also say for full disclosure, say that Simon has actually in the, in the membership. So he has first hand experience of, of the product. He's been in there. Simon wouldn't have even got through the door six months ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time we met Simon, he was. <laughs> <sit outside. laughs> <laughs> First time we met Simon, yeah, he was he was wheeled in. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did one of those cranes out of his way. It was like one of those horrific programs of TV. <laughs> Here comes Simon! It's actually been really good, Simon, being today because.
we've had a little chat about you know what, what would you like to see in there what what would help you more that kind of thing because you don't that kind of feedback you don't normally get it, you don't have to send surveys out and mm -hmm. stuff like that so yeah that point of part of it is, is absolutely critical to just keep 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 that in the pilots was pulled in a pilot originally online uh, on Facebook not paid yes. then we're in a kind of a piloty moment at the moment with a paid product so therefore he has to make sure that it all works before he comes through to affiliate because what will happen is if I go to my list and all that stuff doesn't work they come to me so that's a really good way to piss off affiliates so he's a guinea pig I know the list that you should be on okay well there we go possibly I don't know there's a list called X exec it's in the city it's got like 1.5 million city people it's basically one of these internal um, you sit on the internal portal of all the banks etc and all the employees get um, discounted products so you know they've got TM Lewin they've got Tink they have to do came through his life for a while you know and you pay to be on the list but basically you've got 1.5 million you know for a product at that price mm -hmm. you must find out about it. i can send you the, the details but, my, you know, but that, that would be really good experience Perfect. something like that wouldn't it so the outcome for paul and again interrupt me if i'm <coughs> jumping over this but the point is he wants he wants lots of people paying him on a monthly basis mm -hmm. and what will logically come out of that if he gets a thousand actually he wants a thousand people within a certain period of time once he has got to that level, he will. Some percentage of them will go. I want to pay you more money to do one-on-one -on -one stuff. He wants to do that. I get that from the golf thing. I mean, it's bizarre. I'm not a golf pro, but I have done it once, and I got paid more than per hour than Butch Harmon, who's the number one coach in the world, gets paid because of the story. So he will get those people logic. So who else could Paul approach and do joint ventures with? Sorry, just give a mini summary about the product again. Product is a monthly continuity product, which is effectively a weight loss fitness transformation product. But it's it, it there's very good science behind. Paul has got exceptionally good grasp of the science behind it. So it's not just go out there and, and I will, as you Paul says, about you know beasting people. It's about here is why you should be doing this, and here is all of the research behind it. It's very compelling and different to what else is happening. People who understand the body, then. Yeah, I, I, I used to get referred people to me who couldn't get results anywhere else. That, that's how I ended in the, in the gym I owned for years. That's kind of where I was. That's why I was working so much, because they get so many people through who couldn't walk properly, yeah. who backs were gone, who, you know, that kind of stuff, and too much weight, because they had hormonal issues, and that's what I used to do. So I used to take them from that very dysfunctional to full function, high intensity, explosive type training very quickly. So is, the, is it the professional membership that all physios hang out with? She's saying about the list. So you chunk up, so you jump, rather than going after every single physio in the area, mm -hmm. it's what's the membership, the equivalent of the IOD for the physiotherapy mm -hmm. world? Professional bodies for professional bodies for physiotherapists is what I'm trying to say. Well, like and you, you often find in the cleaning industry, for example, you have um, like a cleaning show, and then you'll have the exhibit of the um, the people who run that show will then collect all the email addresses of all those people who attend that show. So if you have some sort of events like that that all those physios go to, they'll probably have lists of who all the physios are. So you go to that list. Yeah, what's interesting is because when you go to uh, you have, I know this because I've had three operations recently, but um, you have a surgery and you undergo rehab, the, the hospital will give you a sheet, mm. these are your exercises, yeah, yeah. and usually they're crap. Mm. So there's another... So it'd be great if on the bottom of that sheet could be, or you could sign up with... Uh, yeah, ads. or you could do a specific rehab section. Mm. Yeah, an affiliate link. What about your kind of business? Yeah. <laughs> I hope that was a phone. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> it was Tamsin's phone. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not saying do you, no, but, sure. but but but. But those larger organisations where it's important for people to be in good shape. Before, when I've worked in a gym, or I've, I've 
teamed up with physios, I've teamed up with chiropractors and osteopaths and that kind of thing. Teamed up with, um, we did a, a little bit of work with Bride to Be, so getting in shape for uh, stuff like that. And I've done fitness model stuff, so got fitness models into shape for photo shoots really quickly. <coughs> and Hollywood actors and actresses and that kind of stuff. Right. So I've done all that, as well as the athlete stuff I've done. Well, and it's about the whole image, isn't it? It's not just about, you know, the putting everyone Yeah, my, my real speciality is getting people healthy. Right. changing people's behaviours, changing their habits and getting them healthy. So that the weight loss and the transformation yeah. is a kind of a, a really good side effect of that. Sure. But fundamentally it's about being functional, it's about, you know, I'm not saying we don't train hard, we do, but if you've got someone come in who's got rheumatoid arthritis, you can't throw them under a barbell and say, right, you know, clean When you say healthy, it's about diet then as well. It's, a, it's all sorts of things. It's, 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 it's from your belief system, how you rest and recover, how you clean yourself out, how you detoxify, how you eat, how you train, all that kind of stuff coming together to help people get a result. Because the more stuff you've got on the side, the quicker you'll get a result. Yeah. If you come to me and only train, I could probably give you a workout that would be. I go home and eat chips every night. Yeah, yeah. it's just not going to be in It's like a podium, isn't it? One, yeah. two, and three. Three is probably diet alone, two is exercise alone, mm -hmm. one is diet and exercise. It's the whole well, I have like a seven step system, if you like. I call them seven pillars. <laughs> and you get all them on board, and that's when the big results come. Who doesn't? But I can do things like I can give people who are, you know, out of shape. I can get them beach ready in six weeks. You know, I can do that. I don't like to do it too much because it's not really doesn't go with my health thing. But I can do it. You know, if someone comes to me and says I need to really get jacked really quickly, can you do that? And we'll do it. And I've done it more than enough times. For How about Weight Watchers and people? You know, these big dietary companies, Cambridge. Go to a travel company. There's people booking this winter ski holiday. Get ready for your for, for the slopes, you know, or summer holiday. Get ready for the beach. Or yeah. It's what we spoke about earlier, Paul, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? That's a nice idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Mm. People right in their head, and you get right in their body. Mm. I mean, it's not a huge list, but yeah, it's a good. It's a good example. Uh, there's something about, so therefore, there must be kind of health type of events that you could speak at. Mm. Yeah, and the big health clubs. Then you're taking, sure. taking their market. You're taking their market, yeah. But, but those events, there must be. Well, not really, because so in order to be able to sign up to, to um, Paul's thing, I had to join a gym. He didn't have to. Well, I remember I said to you, would it be a good idea if I, if I joined him? See, you need uh, the kettlebells, yeah. you need all that. So, so then that's a good yeah, thing. You don't there there are the programs in and out of the discounted notice. rate. You know, if you become a member of Virgin or, or David, David Lloyd or something. But there's a preferential rate or something. The personal trainers wouldn't be happy there. Yeah. This is the thing that's going to say, sure, work with it. they get their personal trainers in, they don't well, really... I quite a, a, like an annoying name. I, I, I'm aware of that. The, it's, the it's not the greatest, the it's not the greatest how can I help you pitch, yeah. though. <laughs> you, you, I don't know if it, is, it exists, but the people that are leaving, mm. cancelling their memberships, that's the list you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, but I'm not sure that that exists. No, Who would you say your top three or four competitors are? Anybody... You know, what kind of <laughs> are there? You'll enjoy this answer. <laughs> Nobody. <Yeah. laughs> um, as far as I'm aware, uh, through the last 10 years of what I've done, nobody does what I do. You heard of Gavin from Ultimate City Boot Camps? I've heard the name, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. doing really well. He yeah. sends out his blog. So. But, you know, would you recommend people getting into bed with a competition type thing with your JV structure? JV structure uh, or uh, just avoid my, that one of the great things about Paul is he's quite emphatic about what he says and then backs it up. So my suggestion would be no. I wouldn't be mm. wanting. I don't think. I don't yeah. think you should be doing a lot of stuff with other people doing the same thing because there will so be. Who, so who is your ideal cust client for this product? Well, you're pretty much looking. You're pretty much looking because oh, rude. the the I tend to go for so for this I've looked to sort of the 35 to 50 year old man. Um, <laughs> Who does trouser games? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite small. It's usually reasonable. Yeah. Maybe running a business, maybe a senior level of business who have success in various parts of their life but let their health go. Mm. So I'm starting to notice that their health is deteriorating in some way. Then don't you want to go to big corporates like PwC or something? Yeah, like it's B&I, yeah, all the B&I memberships. Yeah. 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 And that's the way to get in because they subscribe. They're quite difficult to get into, those big corporates. They're really tight because their HR departments just vet the hell out of everyone they use. So if you go through the ex-exec route, that would be yes. really good. What about 
running clubs and things where people are keeping fit done, separately. But done that, to... but the, the problem you find with things like triathlon clubs, running clubs, cycling clubs mm -hmm. and all that is that the, a lot of their stuff is endurance based and they don't want to go to the gym too much because mm -hmm. they have this yeah. idea that they're going to put on too much muscle and not going to be able to do their sport and all that sort of mm -hmm. thing and you kind of... I did a presentation once years ago for uh, the East London Triathlon Association and I had a huge uptake of them athletes into a strength program I was doing because I showed them that actually it will make them better mm. athletes. But it's, 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 for the average person, the elite athlete can see it, the average person there's a, a lot of incongruity there. Why do, I, why do I want to come spend 300 quid an hour with you when I can just run? Mm. Yeah, you know, for a pair of sixty pound trainers. Yeah. So this, is, so it's thirty five to fifty five. Do they earn good money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, oh, they don't have to for the membership. Not for the membership, no. Oh, I've got an idea, which is um, well, I've not this before. There's one hundred and thirty seven thousand members in the Escape the City um, community, and they describe themselves as and they do call it a community of motivated corporate professionals who want to do something different. And we just mm. thought they might. Oh, I've heard of them, yeah. Mindset. I'm, sh I'm sure I know somebody who knows them. What was interesting in, in, in the pilot verse, you know, out of one of the mastermind meetings, this run a pilot idea came up, which uh, I run for about I mean, six to eight weeks, something like that. Yeah. I, I was going to do it initially for six weeks, but a few people asked if they could stay on it for another couple of weeks because it was coming up to Christmas. Um, and we, so we ran it for eight weeks. Uh, there were 12 very different people on it. Um, they all did really well, but the interesting thing was they all were saying about how much more pr productive they were, how yes. better they were, how much more concentration they had, how better they were at work and stuff like that. So that was kind of very interesting feedback for what we were trying to do, which was f fundamentally just to shift some weight, so mm -hmm. if we could get these people to shift weight online. But you know, if you look up, I'm a bit obsessed about abs. <laughs> But you know, if you look at how to you get are. my abs or whatever, something like that, there's so she many flashes videos. her abs on her weekly accountability videos because <laughs> they'd come back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tell you, it's, it's impressive stuff. Um, you know, if you have you done YouTube videos, you know, because people are constantly looking about. Yeah, I get, get a lot. I've got a lot of uh, stuff through that. Yeah. Um, about the magazines, like Men's Health. Oh, now we Men's Health and me have got history because I keep writing to them and telling them their shit. Um, <laughs> which again isn't, isn't you notice that wasn't in my proposal that man himself, or is it going to be bought by his girlfriend or his wife as a yeah. present don't tell me what was that sorry is um, this product going to be bought by the man himself if your ideal client is a 35 to 55 year old man or will it be bought by his wife or girlfriend it'll be bought by the man himself would yeah, it would you say yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this is quite a rude way for girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I have found this for you. Here's your Valentine's present. Yeah. 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 This guy who had to have the suit paid for to go and talk. So, big pinch there. I mean, I know that's the story that's kicked around, but that, that, that suit that's true, apparently. Okay. But yes, oh, it's a great tagline. And um, but again, what we're trying to do though is the, the minimal amount of that. That, to an extent, is a version of what Paul used to do for quite a lot of mine. Slightly, um, it's only because this is up, the financial advisor that my husband and I use is a company called Magus, who do a whole financial overview of your what you want emotionally, what you want. So they look at your whole package. They could be. And they deal with, you know, men who are knackered and are tired out, but they have a very uh, more, a deeper conversation with their clients. And if the guy says, in that private space, I'm feeling really knackered and I'm, you know, da 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 da. So like Magus, who's, who's, his whole attitude, Mike Aiken, is all about helping the person mm -hmm. as well as the money. Because if you help the person, the money tends to take care of itself. Mm. And you're more productive, as he said. They yeah. are... Yeah, he's just one company that I could introduce you to, but his attitude towards it is, is, 
is very different from any other financial advisor I've ever come across. Yeah, that kind of sits well with where I'm going. And then he is, because these guys, I mind it, getting into their shoes, they take advice from an expert, somebody they trust. Mm -hmm. So someone like Mike Aitken, for example, if you're a senior executive listening to Mike and he's financially telling you and, he goes, and you, be, you say to him, I'm knackered, Mike. Mike said, you need to get yourself, get yourself sorted out. I'd really recommend this man's product. And that, I think that man would listen. I know my husband would listen to someone like Mike telling him. That was mine. Yes. So well, I can introduce you to you. If you're trying to scale that yeah. the rationale there, you want to find a list of people that already advise yeah. your target market. Yeah. On so solicitors, I can. Yeah. Yes. And also, my husband works for Accenture, and every year with the private health package, he has to go and have a an annual checkup, MO body MOT, mm. yeah. and I, and they say to him, you know, you've got, you know, they haven't said it, but you know, if you've got bloody new and or whatever, you do this, this or this. If you're feeling, if you're overweight, we recommend you talk to him. Yeah, so it's the health, yes, it's, whether it's food, but it's one of those companies tied in with these huge organisations. I've seen a few friends in the last couple of weeks putting things on Facebook saying, got the annual coming up, better get in the gym. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, There's something else in this space around ex-exec and the corporate portals, which is just having lived in in a corporation that used ex-exec and all of that good stuff. Uh, have you thought about corporate memberships to your site? Because that's a really low cost way of providing health benefit. Most corporates have a tiered that's health benefit right. structure right. where at a certain level private medicine kicks in and the whole good shebang. But there's a lot of people below that level that aren't going to go anywhere near that and your model is an incredibly cheap way to provide mm-hmm. enterprise-wide health support. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, yeah, the big corporates, the big banks have wellness departments, haven't they? Yeah. 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 And they've got a referral to the priory because it doesn't always work for them. So actually, you're a lot cheaper than that good stuff. They spend a so share of the cash in the priory. Well, the interesting thing is that's come out of that, as far as I'm concerned, is that we probably need to craft that second tier. Yeah, we yeah. did speak yeah. of that, didn't we? Yeah, but I have a much clearer view in my head, you probably do too, in terms of how that might work. Uh, because one of the key parts of this is Paul wants to, <laughs> to be hands off for his 20 quid a month. As much as it's humanly possible, yeah, which is always my holy grail. Now, I think there's a ton there. Mm, yeah. <coughs> do you want to put a deadline on? Yeah, the deadline now. Yeah. We, could, we could do this for another Pomodoro. Yeah. You happy enough with that? Yeah. Can you take a picture of it? Yeah, so, no, I, I think.